So I'm on a bit of a mission to find a budget smartwatch in 2021 that's actually good. And well, I think I might have actually found one. Today, we're going to be reviewing and unboxing the Qbot C5 smartwatch. Let's check it out and see if it's still worth buying. Stay tuned. Guys, welcome back to Take It Easy. So another budget smartwatch on the review table today, but this time I'm actually fairly excited about it. Though it's not running on Wear OS or anything fancy like that, but the UI for the price has actually kind of impressed me. But more on that later on in the video, let's unbox this thing and see how it comes. Side note, I didn't pick the color, I promise. Qbot actually sent this out to me, so thank you very much for that. So the box, straight away better experience than say the Umi DG smartwatch we unboxed and reviewed last week. It feels a little bit more exciting and just presented better. Now inside the box, you do have the watch itself with a pink strap on this version, but you'll also get a spare strap in a different color. How good is that? Almost feels like an Apple Watch unboxing. Okay, maybe not, but it's still pretty good. The charger in this case is a magnetic one, which is brilliant in my opinion. I would accept anything that's not one of those horrible clip-on plastic ones I complain about in almost all my videos. So apart from a manual hiding behind everything, that's pretty much all you get in the box. I believe it does come in a black version too, so don't worry, you're not stuck with the pink version, although I do think that I wear it pretty well. So let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, it does look remarkably like an Apple Watch. But really, it's completely different. For example, the dial on the side doesn't actually do anything when you rotate it. However, it does double as a physical button, so you can actually turn it on and off, step back and go to the menu section. Something that I've said many times is something that we really need on fitness trackers and smartwatches. I think it just gives an all round better experience and it means you don't have to plug it in to turn it on. Now from turning it on, I actually had another pleasant surprise and that was the screen brightness. A lot brighter than other budget smartwatches and fitness trackers I've tested and probably even brighter than some of the flagship ones I've tested. This is really important on a fitness tracker or smartwatch as a lot of us will be exercising outside. So it's important that you can see it in direct sunlight. Now for the UI, no, it's not an Apple watch and it's certainly not a Galaxy watch. It's definitely a budget smartwatch UI, but it's not all that terrible. When swiping through, you get quite a nice snappy response. Still feels like you're swiping through a PowerPoint presentation, but a fast one at that. You also have some nice animations on the steps, heart rate and sleep tracking pages, which brings a bit of fun and life to the smartwatch. Also, going back to the display, it's actually fairly vibrant, which is complemented by those fun animations and the bold colors used on the sleep tracking and other screens. I also found the icons to be nice and bold. Text is easy to read. Really not too bad so far, not too bad at all. Now let's just talk about the menu quickly. So to get to the menu, you can tap that button on the side and it looks great, but I really just want to turn that dial. It's even textured and it just feels like it is meant to be twisted. So maybe for the next version, Qbot could maybe make this something that actually works. I think it would really add to the whole user experience, but then again, I don't know if this can be done on a tighter budget. But anyway, the menu. Here you have shortcuts to things like stopwatch, workouts, your heart rate and sleep again messages, find my phone, and a few other bits. It's a simple layout, but I don't really mind this. It's easy to navigate, and that's the most important part. So yeah, in general, the Qbot C5 smartwatch has a really nice look and feel to it, especially for its budget price. So let's see how it does on paper and take a look at the specs. So we of course have that 1.7 inch color touchscreen display we talked about earlier in the video, up to 15 days of battery life, which is pretty good. I definitely think you could push the watch to that 15 days, but you'd have to keep the screen brightness down. I don't think mine's quite gonna reach the 15 days stated, but I have been messing around with it a lot and doing some heavy testing, so do bear that in mind. Next, we have 24 seven continuous heart rate monitoring. Again, another brilliant feature to have. Then we have 10 sports modes, which isn't great to be honest. We've seen a lot of other fitness trackers and smartwatches come with many, many more than that. For example, the upcoming OnePlus plus smartwatch, which should be released this week actually, that has well over 100. On the flip side of that, all these modes really do is tailor the tracking to whichever workout you're doing. Really, they all track the same things, like your heart rate, 
steps if necessary, and other bits like that. So for a lot of people, it won't be a huge drawback. So we also have the ability to get call and text notifications, but do bear in mind you can't reply to the texts or use the watch to take a call. And I wouldn't really expect it to at this price point, to be honest. I mean, that would be asking a lot. As I talked about earlier, we do have features such as Find My Phone, a shutter controller for your phone's camera, music controller. Then finally, we have five ATM waterproofing. So you can actually take this swimming with you if you're that way inclined. All in all, not too shabby for a device that's going for just over 30 pounds in the UK. Originally, it was going for 60 pounds, which even at that price point, I wouldn't say it's a particularly bad deal. However, if I was going to price this watch, I'd actually put it somewhere between the middle. I definitely think if this was going for around 45 pounds, it'd definitely still be worth it. So we can't let the Qbot C5 get away without doing a heart rate accuracy test. So if you haven't watched one of my videos before, what we use is the O2 ring that the guys at WellU sent out to me. So what this will actually do is communicate with my phone and you'll see at the top is your SpO2 and the bottom is your heart rate. Now, something I did neglect to mention is that this doesn't actually have SpO2 monitoring on it which does put it behind a lot of its competitors. But for a lot of people, heart rate will just do fine. So first time round, it came out pretty spot on, but the bar on my O2 ring was showing up as red, which means the connection wasn't too great. So I ran it through again, and again, it was almost spot on. Occasionally it was one or two beats out, but absolutely nothing to worry about. This is pretty much in line with flagship smartwatches like the Apple Watch and the Galaxy Watch 3. So big green tick for me on heart rate accuracy. So there you have it. That was the Qbot C5 smartwatch. As always, let me know in the comment section what you thought of the Qbot C5. As I've said many times throughout the video, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. I think they've done a great job. It is tough to find a decent budget smartwatch, especially when you've got fitness trackers. As usually, we kind of see fitness trackers as budget smartwatches. Anyway, it's been an absolute delight to review. If you did enjoy the video, please do leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here. But for now, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.